Good evening, IRAP student of Lunar and Associates with your Spider ETF wrap up. And this is for Monday, the 8th of June, 2020. All right, my friends, another strong day. What a rally we've had. You know, if, if you looked, I think we had, what, the 34% break in the market, uh, and I'm talking the cash S&P, going from February down through March, and now we've rallied back, I think, over 40%. It's just an unbelievable rally. I hope the U.S. economy can do what the stock market has done. That's gonna be the key. This is all on the bet, and I think you know that, that things are getting better, and the market's in this rotation. People are coming out, so let's buy some airline stocks. Boeing, market down hard, had to do all this borrowing. All of a sudden, the stock doubles, doubles in the past 60 days. You take a look at cruise lines. They're taking off. We heard talk just weeks ago, some of the airlines might go broke. You're looking at Hertz declare bankruptcy. Its stock goes up pretty big today. I mean, I'm, I'm seeing things, and I have been around this horn. I'm seeing things that just don't make sense, but it seems to be money chasing everything around there, thinking, I'm gonna miss it, I've gotta get in in this part of it, because we already saw the tech make its move. It was right in front of us doing, during us all in the houses, locked in and shut-ins, and now that people are going out again, why can't the Cheesecake Factory come back in its price. Why can't this one come back? And that's the mentality at work. Get it? You don't have to agree with me, but get it because that's what's going on. So you see this across the board. You only had USO down today. Look, look at this. No other market part was down with it. So when we come to XLK, yes, it's up again, and yes, it's knocking on the door of these all-time highs, but understand the techs have been paused as the rest of the market has been coming up to catch it. That's what bull markets do. You heard out of my mouth, that's what bull markets do. They change sectors on you, and as one sets back, another catches up, and that's been what's going on here. The pattern bullish still. We, you can't argue, we've got the higher lows, higher high pattern, that's the definition of an uptrend. You pause if you get under 98.26, which is about, what, $2 from here, $3 from here? You've had bullishness in that you've got the 18-day average of closes over the 100, the 100 over the 200. You had a bullish crossover right here. The market hasn't looked back, nor since that time has it been able to get under the 18-day average of closes. Where's the, uh, where's the resistance, the fence at the top? It's pretty clear. It's been this black dashed line called a Bollinger Band. It matches up with this one right here. They do not run parallel to each other. Window envelopes do. These do not. And this is based on an algorithm, and you can get the formula. It's out there in Investopedia, and you can run this, and you'll see just how it works. Now, some people use in this different lengths of time. Some look back 14 days, 18 days. I've seen 21 days. Everybody has a little twist on how they like to work with it. But look at it this way. This is the idea. When you're over the 18-day average of closes, which I consider a line in the sand, it's the definition of where your bias should be. If prices are over it, I have upside bias. Under it, downside bias. If the market's over it, I look on breaks to see if that number is going to find the support. If it's under it, I look if the market rallies back to find it as resistance. It doesn't always do that. But when it does, it gives me a definition of what's going on. I tie this together with momentum. Now, the strongest part of my technical indicators is an embedded reading that I teach in my charting course. And it's basically when the K and the D lines get over the 80 reading on this, and instead of being overbought, I call it locked in or embedded, either one. Could have called it locked in. I like embedded better. It means that you've ingrained it. And when that happens, there is a key moving average that I do not show here. I show it in my morning subscriber video that I think the traders are looking at and they've got resting orders there and that's what they try to pick up the market at. And you can see that where they pitch it, they're trying to pitch some of those out. They're buying, selling, buying. I don't know if they're getting out of all their position. An uptrend, they may say, I'm going to keep a certain percentage, but I'm going to buy and sell along the way. 
I understand that. Some build positions along the way. There's different ways to do that. I talk about this all in my charting course. In the slow stochastic, as you can see in SMH, you still have the embedded reading. The market still has the pattern higher lows, higher highs. You get over the reading, then you get back under it. It's classic bullishness in, in this. And as you can see, you've cleared these levels. Very important. So you're back up to all-time high levels, but it's being dragged. It's not being dragged. It's going up at a slower pace than it did before as money is hitting the other parts of the market right now. When you get to the industrial sector, I don't have enough money to get in, and that's why this has gone into a vertical price rise. The I don't have enough money to get in, it's traders looking around going, what's undervalued that I can still get in that isn't at a new high for the move, because you're not there. And the money chases the money. Embedded reading again, same type of thinking. The energy sector, now it's had a nice pop. It came out of pretty good sideways action, got the breakout, you've had the higher lows, higher highs. Do I ever tell you to buy over a Bollinger Band? No, but I also see you got two pretty strong days that back to back now at the part of top part of the day's range on closes, confirming to me that until you get under these lows again, this market has uh, said flashing, buy, buy, buy uh, for this in type of bye-bye price, <laughs> got that? And I'm not telling you bye-bye, but bye-bye price, and away you're, you're off to the races. Do you stay over a Bollinger Band very long? No. And that's because the algorithm's designed only 5% of the time when you stay over it, so it's gonna adjust to it or price will. As you look at the uh, NASDAQ, same thing, embedded reading, higher lows, higher highs, running against it. Here's what happened in this market. It's pretty easy to understand for those of you that have taken my charting course. My theory, these are my theories, doesn't mean they're right, by the way, is that when you have an outside day down, a key reversal day down, if that high is taken out in the next two trading sessions. Now, some of you use a 15-minute bar, a five-minute bar, a one-week chart, whatever you're comfortable with. My theory is, if that's taken out, you've laid a trap for those that think a top is in place, and the market often moves to the closest of a Bollinger top again, which it did right away, or another moving average if one is up there. So I think you laid the trap and this is the price that those people are paying. Everybody wants to pick a top. Everybody wants to pick a bottom. They get laid away. Follow the trend. That's, the trend's your friend. You've heard that statement. You don't need to be the hero on the block. Same thing going on the EFA. Okay, and I'm gonna give a definition to one of my friends that thinks my definition was wrong on this. This is, just think of it as Asian markets, emerging markets, that's what it is. And you've got the higher lows, the higher highs, you have the embedded reading, market still looks to me like it wants to work higher. Gold, where do you think the first spot that the pros would come out if the market drops on them, if they're short? I don't know if they're short or not. I'd look for the Bollinger Band. My theory is the first time you hit it, it's often where pros take money off the table on the downside or on the upside. You're getting a bounce in the market, you come down through it and you go, ah, you're gonna follow through. And today it handed you your head. You don't want, in my opinion, you don't want to be short under Bollinger Bands or long over Bollinger Bands. If you have to, back away, that's what I teach. You're oversold down to that number to negate the current downtrend. I think you've got to take out 161.87, but even if you ran right up through it tomorrow, you'd have a lower and low, higher high. So there's nothing I see that can do anything but maybe take the shorts out of the market, but I don't see the bull stepping in and taking over the chart. Same in the gold miners. You've got the lower highs, lower lows, but very oversold. If you keep pressing to the downside, maybe price and this 100-day average, they might make a run at each other. In TLT, now you have to ask yourself a big question. How do you want to go through the FOMC? statement and then the press conference because that's what you're forced to do. You have 48 hours of trading at one o'clock in the afternoon on Wednesday, we're gonna get that statement. The market's already starting, the pros 
typically go into their evening up process a day or so before. Uh, remember, not everybody's an in and out trader. Some are longer term traders. They got to figure out what they want to do. To me, I would not be surprised if you want to get back to that 100 day average. What's the momentum here? Scary. What's the closing price? 2119 on the slow stochastic. Day before, both numbers under 20. Day before, under 20. Day before, under 20. Day before, under 20. And it began about not there, right here. So now that you lost it, what do I think the pros are gonna do? When you lose an embedded reading, the only time you can get it back is the next day, which in this case is Tuesday. But I think the smart, smart, smart money says, you know, I wanna see what the Fed does. That's a sign maybe I shouldn't be hanging around. I can't tell you that they're doing that. This is how I think that you use these indicators. In FXE, you still have a bullish embedded reading. You still have the pattern higher lows higher highs, you get over the Bollinger Band and then you got thrown back under it. We talked about that last week and that's what the market's done. You had a bullish crossover now. And let's see if I can get this to work for you. There you go. So last Wednesday, you had the 18 day average under the 100. It got up on Thursday and this is the last day I did a daily chart with you over it. Now the market's trying to figure out, should it go up for the 200 day? In the meantime, you wanna keep your eye on the slow stochastic. If you see that red line get under 80, it's a sign you're weakening even though you're looking at all that strong action. You know, I know a lot of you trade the spiders, the ETFs, like we were just talking here in the Euro currency. Well, I watch these. I watch the FXY, the FXB for you. I cover a whole slew of different markets on energies, and I mean a whole array of them. Uh, the airlines we watch with jets, J-E-T-S. I keep adding more and more charts into my morning subscriber video for futures, and then I bring it in an afternoon chart for spiders and ETFs. The two together give a pretty interesting story. And I, I know that you're smart enough to realize that other than the individual spiders, most of the other parts look at the futures market. I mean, if you're gonna trade indices, be a QQQ, DIA, whatever they are, they're gonna be looking at what the futures are doing. GLD, SLV, they're looking there. TLT, they're gonna look. The energies, they're all gonna look to see what it is, except parts of the service sectors and other than that. But once you get to the oil itself, you know they're looking at the futures markets. UNG, gonna be the natural gas. I cover all this for you, give you a whole picture, and I can do much more than you see in these free videos I put out on YouTube. These are the feeder into that. So what I'd recommend you do, give it a try. They're not expensive, let's start with that. There's no contract, you don't need that. Uh, we, we keep adding people all the time, they seem to like it, I can tell you that. And we get a lot of commentary. I keep promising I'm gonna start uh, doing webinars. I admit I haven't done them again. Uh, I've just been busy, but I'm making time right now. I'm getting my dusting off my Zoom, and that's what I'll probably use this time. I used to use WebEx, now I'll probably use Zoom. And we'll get into that only because Zoom is so much easier for the first time user to work with, whereas WebEx is just a little rougher to get to the first time. After that, it's a pretty good system. I like both. Uh, in any case, this is how it works. You go to our website under the word research. It explains everything, and that's where you can sign up. You can click up here to get there as well. In the meantime, I'm going to go have a nice dinner. You have a great night, and I will see you all first thing in the morning when I record my morning subscriber videos for futures, 5.40 a.m. You take care.